Welcome everyone to Forest New Life Church uh, service this morning. This special day, it's Mother's Day. Hope you all had your mums, you've had your breakfast in bed, or you may be still led there now with a bit of toast and a cup of tea. Well, if you haven't, get shouting. But do welcome you to our service this morning. And uh, for all those watching, I pray you're the blessing of God today, especially the mums. I've got a little poem for the mums before we move on. And uh, it's uh, one that I picked up off the, online. It, and it's a daughter, a daughter's poem to her mum. And it's called Love is Forever. And this is what the daughter said to her mum. Sometimes you're silly. And sometimes you're weird. Occasionally, I feel embarrassed and want you disappeared. Sometimes you annoy me, and I yell and shout. And every now and then, you make me pout. Often I say to you things I don't mean. And I may even act like a crazy drama queen. But no matter what happens, or how I act, my love and appreciation for you is eternal. That's a fact. And I guess as parents, as mums, you've been through that, not just with daughters, but with sons as well. Uh, so I can remember the paddies I had when uh, I was young. And uh, used to say things and do things that uh, upset me now that I ever treated my mum like that. But... Uh, as you, no doubt, as me, I've had a blessed mum. Right, we're going to do uh, a short time of prayer just to start the service off. Then we'll worship, and then we'll do a little time of prayer just before Tim, who's going to be our speaker, brings the message this morning. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this special day. We thank you for mums. We thank you for the watching over us. We thank you for everything that you've been to us through these difficult times. When we felt down, you've lifted us up. When we wondered and feared what lies ahead, you've given us comfort. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And as this morning we worship you, and we praise you, we listen to your word, I pray, Lord, that everything that is said will bring glory to your name. And for those watching, I pray, Lord, that you'll give them a special blessing over the airways, as it were, and that they would receive something from you. So we pray, Lord, now as we worship you in song, that what we bring will just bring a, a sweet-smelling savour, as, as, savour as, as the Word says to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a time of worship now as uh, Stella and Gabby lead us. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Gab. Well, thank you, Pete. And isn't it another wonderful morning? And we're here to praise our Lord. So we're going to sing, My Jesus, my Saviour, shout to the Lord.
nothing compares to the promise that you give us. There is no one like you. You are faithful. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come before your throne of grace. So we're going to sing, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder, I behold your face, singing, what a faithful God have I. joy and a pleasure it is and a precious time to be in his presence so we're going to sing now a, a gentler song to be in your presence to sit at your feet where your love surrounds me and makes me complete this is my desire And at the end of this song, we're just going to 
continue to play to give you a time for reflection and to feel the presence of God. It's a lovely song that Stella and Gabby sang for us. And the Spirit of God was on it. To be in your presence, to be in God's presence, that is such a gift that God has given to us as Christians, that we can be in his presence. And while Gabby and, and Stella sing quietly that song again, let's just wait in his presence for a few, a few moments and, like, and, and reflect on this day, particularly Mother's Day and, and your families and whatever, ever, 
but that your God will be with them and trust him to look after them until this lockdown ends. I was just feeling as I was sat down there listening to them sing that so many mums have not seen their mums. So many grandmothers and grandparents have not seen their grandchildren. And that's quite heartrending. Some of them for weeks and months. Let's pray and just reflect now that where they are, that those were, because even though you haven't been there, you've been there in spirit, you've been there with your love. And I pray that each parent particularly mums and grandmums at this day, will know that their children, their grandchildren, perhaps even their great-grandchildren, love them dearly and long to see them. And I pray, Lord, as it appears things are improving, that soon families will be able to meet parents with their parents grandchildren with their grandparents and that all will be restored and that they can be a hug, be, hug each other and show their love but Lord as we reflect just for a second or two now let's just as it were what am I looking for for push out that love to, to your family even though you can't see them you would minister to each family and yes Lord although we're repeating it especially to mums and grandmums and great grandmothers in these difficult times I pray Lord that each one would know the love of God and also have that full knowledge that their children their grandchildren great grandchildren love them dearly and will soon be able to see them Lord, I pray that you would, by your spirit right now, minister to each family, I pray. The sadness, if there's hurt because of the situation that surrounds this country and the world at this moment, you would melt that away with your peace. And that they would know that they can sit in the presence of God and know his comfort. Dear Lord, I pray. This is my desire. This as we come towards the end of this song, I pray, Lord, that as we listen to your word from Tim this morning, that we would know again the blessing of the word of God on our lives. I pray your anointing on Tim as he ministers your word. And Lord, I pray that we would know your presence with us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Tim, as you come to minister and pray God's anointing on you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when, um, when we think about Mother's Day, 
I think about my late mother. She was a product of the Welsh Revival. She was born in 1921 in South Wales in the Valleys. And one thing I remember about my mother is that she was a prayer. She taught us to pray. She led me to the Lord when I was seven years old on a Sunday night. And she prayed with me that, that prayer at my bedside before I went to bed on that Sunday night. And during the church life, she was a prayer. So was her father, granddad on that side of the family. <laughs> used to scare the living daylights out of me. You know, as a, a little boy on a Sunday morning, if I sat in front of him, you know, a bit boring, I would start nodding off. And granddad, during that corporate time of prayer, usually around about the communion time, he was slightly mutton to Jeff, he was a bit deaf, he would jump up put his hands on my shoulders and start praising the Lord like this. And I went, oh! <laughs> I learned not to sit too close to him. But having had that upbringing, there's a real sort of desire in my heart to, to investigate the, the whole idea of prayer as believers in Jesus. And Jonathan brought... Um, Beautiful message last week on, on that personal prayer. And this week and next week, I want to look at the whole idea of corporate prayer. You see, despite the fact that many churches do not have a significant corporate prayer expression, but most prayer leaders and pastors believe that praying together is so very important. So what are the benefits of corporate prayer? Trust me, there's loads of them, but today I just want to pick up on three of them. Praying together invites the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, if you read in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and through to chapter 7, we see this whole dedication of Solomon's temple, and it says, while the whole assembly of Israel were standing there, in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 3, Solomon prayed a prayer of dedication, which he invoked the very presence of God. Now, my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests, O God, be clothed with salvation. May your saints rejoice in your goodness. Of course, if you read the whole account, God's power came in a dynamic way that the priests couldn't minister you see, there's a different atmosphere in churches that pray together and who have praying people. Worship seems more powerful. There's a sense of connection with God that there isn't in a non-praying church. As people, people who hunger, who want to draw closer to God through prayer, worship and pray together, Something happens. God shows up. It's been said, the presence of God in the midst of a church is in direct proportion to the amount of prayer that takes place there. You see, friends, when the Spirit of God is present, things happen. People hear him speak given direction and encouragement. 
We see this in the church of Antioch, where while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have called them to. So after what they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on the two of them and sent them off. You can read this in Acts 13. During that time of prayer and worship, the Holy Spirit gave critical direction that forever changed our world. When Paul or Saul began his missionary work, as we, as a congregation, pray together, God will show up. There's been a number of times when we've get gathered together in prayer, both here in previous churches where God turned up to a point that we just stopped everything that we were doing and we prayed and worshipped our precious Lord and we sang his praises. I spent many an evening sat on the floor laughing in the spirit. God can do the same here. God can do the same here. So my second point is praying together increases the faith of a congregation to believe in the miraculous. Now there's an account in the Bible which you'll find in Matthew 17 verse 14 and also Mark 9 verse 14. It's the story of the father who had, he had a de demon-possessed son and brought him to Jesus' disciples. But they couldn't cast the demon out. The boy was then taken to Jesus, who issued a simple command, and the demon left him. Later on, the disciples came to Jesus, and they were baffled. Lord, why, why didn't it happen? Why couldn't they cast out this demon? Of course, this account ha happens when Jesus sent the disciples out by two by two into all the villages to heal the sick and cast out the demons. So the disciples knew this. But they asked Jesus, why didn't it happen that time? And Jesus picks up on two interesting things. In Matthew 17, verse 20, he says, because you have so little faith. And then he brings up in Mark 9, verse 29, this kind comes out only by prayer. I'm wondering if the disciples attack this demon issue, cavalier or maybe routine. They knew the words to say, the steps to take, but nothing worked because they hadn't prayed enough. Their faith was not there as a result. You see, there's a clear connection between prayer and faith beyond the fact that we're supposed to pray in faith. I believe that the most significant thing that is lost in the church today is corporate prayer. Because as we pray together, our faith grows. There simply is no expectation that God will do the miraculous. One of the main reasons why churches are stagnant and do not see God at work in a miraculous way in their midst is most of the churches and individuals do not know what it is to pray in faith anymore. Faith grows as we pray together. That's how it works. Maybe I'm pers personally going through a tough time. I'm in the midst of it. I try, try to pray with trust and faith, but it's difficult because I can only see that issue in my life that's predominant. If I go and pray with others, 
what happens. As a result of others praying with faith more than I have, my faith grows. You see, this also happens in the corporate situation. Let's say, for example, our church is planning an event on the green outside there. I'm a bit skeptical of the plan. I think it's beyond what our church could afford. I began to pray with others regarding this. God now puts a heart of trust in me. He brings me to unity with those that I'm praying with. He gives me faith to believe him for the miraculous. His vision and plan for our church. When I only pray by myself, that is less likely to happen. Churches that don't pray together still minister in whatever way they can, give their resources and their abilities and sacrifices. But churches that pray together begin to see the miraculous power of God at work in their midst. It, be God, be, it, it goes beyond what they can and should do into what God wants to do through them. We focus prayer on God's blessing, asking that his transforming power should once again move in our church here in Park End. If we increase the level of praying together amongst our congregation, we will see more miracles happen as our faith rises. I don't know about you, but I have a desire to see that and be part of that. For our faith to increase and for God to move miraculous. My third and final point is this. Praying together moves people from seeking their own purposes to desiring God's purposes. There's a funny story I heard a number of years ago about this single woman who used to come along to the prayer meeting every Monday night and she used to pray for her husband. And the minister got a bit tired of this and uh, he took her to one side and gently said to her, maybe you need to pray for something a little bit different than praying for a husband. So the next Monday night, she got up to pray, and she prayed for her mother-in-law. <laughs> you see, most people's prayers seek the best fix for a situation. We typically pray whatever we're told to pray for a, a particular situation with no real thought of what does God want to do here. I read a book this week and there was a, a difficult situation which was explained where they were in a prayer meeting. The, the minister's wife was dying of cancer. And the church came around the minister and they were praying. And it was quite a dynamic meeting. And they were praying that the Lord would touch her. The author of the book was in on that prayer meeting. And she was only pretty young um, from the way she wrote the account. She was listening to God. And God said to her, they're praying against my will. I want her to come home. I'm desiring for her to come home. And for that young woman, who was the author of this book, she timidly spoke to the minister and said, we're praying wrong. We need to be praying that she goes home to be with her Lord. And they stopped the prayer meeting 
And the Spirit witnessed within their heart that what they were praying for should be that the Lord would bring her home to glory and that the Lord's Spirit would minister to those, her husband and family, that were left behind. You see, as a church, we really need to be in tune with what we're praying. You see, things can happen dynamically when we pray together. We start to let go of those desires and we start to see what God wants to do and what God wants from us. Attentive ears and an open heart and an open mind. You see, as a church, when we start doing this, it has a huge impact on the ministry of the church and the decision-making. If people pray together over an issue, even if people come to prayer thinking that they know what the church should do, when we pray together, God opens the desires in our hearts and we are in unity. You see, church, if we pray together, then let us watch and see God work Unity amongst us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through to 13, is a powerful promise written to the corporate body of people. This is what it says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your heart. See how inclusive that is? God is saying, if all of you who seek him, you will find the plans that he has for you. If you want to see God's blessing in our churches here in the Forest of Dean, and if you want to see Jesus' transforming power and the dynamic mystery of the Holy Spirit in our midst, friends, we got to pray together. We've got to be in unity. It's difficult in this time for us to meet together in a building. But friends, if you have a heart as I have this day, for God to use me, for God to use us in that transforming power We've got to pray together. We've got to meet together. We've got to praise our Lord. We've got to have a desire within our spirit. And we pray that the Lord will give that to each and every one of us. If prayer is boring, then you don't know God. I love talking and listening to my wife. I love her so much. And that is what it is when we're with God. It's two-way communication. We praise him, we worship him, we petition him, we exalt him, and then we need to listen. And church... As we dwell on these scriptures today, and we know it's right for us to grow in faith and see God work in our location, it's so important for us to pray together along the same lines and in unity. Let me pray with you. Father God, as we dwell on these words and we see the scriptures from Jeremiah 29. 
we see what happened when Solomon dedicated that temple in Chronicles 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and 7. We see, Lord, that you turned up and you messed up all human plans. And Lord, let us have a desire in our hearts for you to do the same for us here in the forest of Dean. Father, start that fire here at Park End that would spread across this country of ours in this world. Let us be in unity when we pray to you, Lord, as a family of God, together. Let your will be done. In your precious name's sake. Amen. Thank you, Tim, for that word. And so absolutely right, so true. If a church prays, God will bless it. It's a promise. And as Tim was speaking, it it just reminded me of this word. And take it on your hearts this morning. Uh, Actually, it was a, a verse that Tim's wife, Yvonne, showed me, and it's uh, in the Bible in Psalm 91, and just the last few verses say this, I will, this is God speaking, I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will find and feel my presence. Just remember, this is God saying even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero. Amen. And give you a feast. This is getting even better. (laughs) And you will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. That's a promise when you pray. Praise God. Thank you so much, Tim, for your word. We're going to have a song just to finish our service this morning. But you out there in uh, into Webland, <clears throat> just remember that. You may not be even a Christian, but you can still say to God, hear me. Ask God for your help. Ask God to be near you. And you will find his salvation. You will find that he answers. He is a God who promises and he keeps those promises. The Lord bless you. And enjoy, mums, enjoy your special day. Amen. Well, thank you, Tim and Pete. It's, uh, yeah, it's so good that we can and that we should pray together and support each other in prayer as well so we're going to finish by singing a song called the splendor of the king how great is our god and it talks about god being king being clothed in majesty and that all the earth should rejoice and praise his name for he is the name above all names